In this next part, I'm going to cover the proton NMR of benzene derivatives. Benzene is a compound that you've surely encountered in class before. It's a six-membered ring of carbons with three double bonds within the ring with the molecular formula of C6H6. Benzene is considered a so-called aromatic molecule. You will learn a lot more about what aromaticity means once you go on to take Orgo2. For now, we're not going to get into that. Please know that the aromatic region, so any hydrogen that is considered aromatic, uh, would show up on the proton NMR in the region of between 7 to 9 parts per million. This is called the aromatic region of the proton NMR. Now, the benzene ring by itself, without any sort of substituents, you would expect to see one single peak, and that peak falls right on 7.26 parts per million. What happens when you remove one of those hydrogens on the benzene and you replace it with a different sort of substituent? Let's look at substituted benzene derivatives. Beginning with A, a mono-substituted benzene derivative. A mono-substituted benzene derivative is one where you have a substituent, let's call that substituent X, and X can be anything other than hydrogen. For example, a halogen or a methyl group or anything you really want in this example. And the question is, how many peaks would we expect to see for such a mono-substituted benzene derivative? The benzene without the substituent, so I'm talking about the benzene up top here, this one has one single peak because every single one of those hydrogens has a chemically equivalent environment. So every single one of these hydrogens is identical to the other, and therefore you only observe one peak. But what is the situation now? Now that we have one substituent that is not a hydrogen, how does that change the number of peaks that are expected? So let's draw in the hydrogens that are missing. So there's a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, here, and here. So there is still five hydrogens left. The hydrogen immediately to the right of the substituent X, let me call that HA. The hydrogen on the other side of X, I'm also going to call HA. These two hydrogens cannot be distinguished from one another. Everything I can say about the right HA, I can say about the left HA. It's exactly one bond away uh, from the carbon that carries the substituent. So they have an exactly identical chemical environment. The hydrogen next to that, let's call that HB, there's one HB on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. Again, both of these HBs have the exact same chemical environment. Each one is exactly the same distance away from the substituent X, and therefore the two hydrogens cannot be distinguished by, in the NMR. And then finally, we have another hydrogen that is across from X, all the way onto the para position, all the way over here. Um, and this hydrogen is unique from the others. This one is farthest away from the substituent, and it's different from the other hydrogens. Therefore, we can say we expect that the two HAs are going to have a peak of their own, the two HBs are going to have a peak of their own, and then finally, HC is also going to have a peak on its own. So how many peaks do we expect to see? Three. What would be the integral ratio of these peaks? Well, the two HAs give one peak, that's two hydrogens total. The two HBs give one peak, that's two hydrogens total. But HC, which has its own peak, only represents one hydrogen. So therefore, uh, the ratio should be two to two to one. Now, in reality, and you will get um, sort of a taste of that later when you look at the actual problems for today's lab, in reality, often what happens is that it's not as clean cut as it looks here. Often, especially the 2 and the 1 over here will overlap so that the actual ratio that you do see on the spectrum will look like a 2 to 3 ratio instead of a 2 to 2 to 1 just giving you a little heads up on that. 
Okay, moving on from mono-substituted benzene derivatives, where we have one substituent, going on to di-substituted benzene derivatives, where you have two different substituents. If you have two different substituents, let's call them x and y, and let's say that these two substituents are not the same. Okay, so for example, x is a bromine and y is a methyl group. They're whatever they are, they are not identical. Now let's put in the missing hydrogens and ask ourselves how many different peaks we would expect um, from a di substituted benzene derivative. For di-substituted benzene derivatives, you have three different um, scenarios. One where the substituents are right next to each other, where, which, which is the case here. This is called an ortho-substituted benzene derivative. The substituents can have a relationship where there's one carbon between the substituents. This would be called a meta-substituted benzene derivative, or if you want to, you can also count the number of carbons. So this is a 1-2 relationship. This is a 1-3 relationship. So meta 1-3, ortho 1-2. And then finally, where the substituents are right across each other from the ring, if you count the carbons in between, that's a 1-4 relationship, and we call that a para-substituted benzene ring. So we have these three options, ortho, meta, and para, each one of them is going to be slightly different. For the ortho-substituted benzene ring, let's look at the hydrogen that is right next to, um, to X. Let's call that HA. No other hydrogen in this entire molecule has the same environment as HA. HA is right next to the substituent X. No other hydrogen in this entire molecule is right next to the substituent X. So this one is going to have its own peak. The next hydrogen down here, let me call that HB. HB is two bonds away from X and three bonds away from Y. No other hydrogen in this molecule we can say the same thing about. The next hydrogen, HC, is two bonds away from Y but three bonds away from X. Again, we cannot say the same thing about any other hydrogen in this molecule. And then finally, HD over here is right next to Y, and we cannot say that about any other hydrogen in the system. So in other words, we have these four hydrogens. Each one of them is unique. So the number of peaks we would expect is four. Each one of these hydrogens that are left on the benzene ring are going to have its own individual peak, and the integration ratio will be one to one to one to one. Each one peak will represent one hydrogen, HA, HB, HC, and HD. Let's look at the meta-substituted benzene ring. Again, I'm going to put in the missing four hydrogens first, H, 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 H. All right, HA, right next to the substituent X, I can say that there's another hydrogen over here on this side that is also next to X, but that one's different because it's also next to Y, whereas HA is only X next to X but not next to Y, so HA is unique. HB over here is two bonds away from X and two bonds away from Y. Can't say that about any other hydrogen there in, the, in this molecule. HC is right next to Y. Um, and three bonds away from X. Cannot say that about any other, any other hydrogen in this molecule. And then finally, HD is also unique because it is the only hydrogen that is exactly in between these two substituents. So again, I would expect to see four different peaks, each one representing one hydrogen between HA and HD, and therefore the integration ratio would again be 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. So on the basis of that, it would be a little difficult to, to distinguish between ortho and meta-substituted uh, benzene derivatives. Now let's look at para-substituted benzene derivative. I'm going to go in here and remove the, the numbers so we have a little bit more room to, to write. Okay. Okay. 
Let me put in the hydrogens. The para substituted benzene derivative is unique. It's different from the others. We have an HA over here on the left hand side and an HA over here on the right hand side. Both of these hydrogens have, chemically speaking, the same environment because they're both exactly the same amount of bonds away from X and the same amount of bonds away from Y. The H on this side, HB, let's call that HB, these two are also identical. They're both exactly the same distance away from Y and both exactly the same distance away from X. So I can say that these two hydrogens, these two HH, H A's are going to have one peak, and these two HB's are going to have one peak. So this is unique. So this means I'm only expecting to see two peaks rather than four. And the ratio of these two peaks, since the peak on the top represents two hydrogens, and the other peak down here that represents the HB's also represents two hydrogens, I would expect to see an integral ratio of two to two. So that's pretty unique. So with this information, you can interpret the HNMR of a disubstituted benzene derivative, and with certainty, you're going to be able to at least distinguish between whether you have a para-substituted benzene ring or whether you have an ortho- or meta-substituted benzene ring. By the way, there are ways to distinguish between meta and ortho, but I am not going to get into that in this lecture, but this is something your professor may choose to cover in your class lectures.